everyone. Now let's go on to discuss few scenario-based Python interview questions with answers. So in Python interview, you may be asked to explain the basic and advanced concepts as well as you may be asked to give solutions for scenario-based questions. Scenario means situation. So they will give you a situation or a problem and you have to provide the proper coding solutions to the given scenario. Okay, let's see the questions one by one. The first question is, given a list of n numbers, use a single list comprehension to produce a new list that contains even numbers and elements in the original list that have even indices. So this is our question. So they have given, we have a list of n numbers. So from that list of n numbers, we need to produce a new list. The new list should contain only even numbers and also the numbers, the even numbers should be present in only the even indices. So even, so even though if there is even numbers in there, odd indices, we should not consider that. So we have to only consider the even indices and if the even indices has even numbers, we have to save it in the new list. Okay. So this is our question. So we let's see the solution for this question. So the solution is we are doing, we are creating a new list with the help of for loop, slicing, and if condition. So x, so we are taking the x from where? From x in the list, and we are slicing it. So we need only even indices. So we are applying slicing operation with step, step parameter. So we have not given any dot index or stop index because uh, we need to take the default value. That is a start index is zero, stop index is up to the list, how many up to n numbers and step. So we will take only, we'll consider only the even indices. So zero, two, four. So from the even indices, we will take the value and we will check if x is divisible by 2. If the number is even number, then it will be stored in the new list. So this is our solution. So how the solution will work? For example, so if we have a list 1, 3, 5, 8, 10, 15, 18, 36, 17. So these are the index values. So what we are going to do, we are going to consider only the elements in the even indices 1, 3, 10, 18, and 78. And we are taking the numbers and checking whether the number is divisible by 2 or not. So first 1. 1 is divisible by 2? No. So omitting 1. 5 is divisible by 2? No. Again, 10. So 10 is divisible by 2? Yes, true. So it is added in the new list. Then 18. True. So it is added in the new list and 78. So the new list will contain 10, 18, and 78. So first we take the numbers from the even indices and we filter out the odd numbers and save the even numbers to the new list. Okay, now let's move on to the next question. How would you produce a list with unique elements from a list with duplicate elements? So first we take a list with duplicate elements. So this is our duplicate list, duplicate is equal to. So it has duplicate elements. That is the A, again, B, 3, Ds like this. We have repetitive of same elements because in list, duplicate elements are allowed. So then what they have, what they, we have to do, we have to produce a list with unique elements. So for that, what we are going to do is so what is the solution? The solution is we are going to convert the list to set. So why we are converting the list to set? In set, the duplicates are not allowed. So once we convert the list to set, set what happens, all the duplicates will be eliminated. And again, the set is converted to list. Why? Because they have told us to produce a list. So the unique items is equal to the first we convert the duplicates 
list into a set and again convert the set to list. So that is this is our result. Then print the result with by sorting by the sorting function. So next question. How does exception handling in Python differ from Java and list the optional classes for how we do this exception handling? Okay. So same as in Java, in Python, we have exception handling, but in a different way. So what is exception handling? To stop the runtime errors to, uh, when we have a doubt that the particular code may create a runtime error, so we will place the code in a try block. So it provides the option of using a try and accept block. So what the programmer will do, the programmer, so they will put the codes in the try. And if there is any error, then the resultant exception, exception statement will be the solution for the error and how to deal the error. This is how we, in Python it will work, but in a bit different way, what, in what are the different classes they have? Try, accept, finally, and try, accept, and else. So these are the two different clauses they, in Python, they have to implement exception handling. It is to handle the runtime error, runtime exception. Fourth question, how to print the sum of the numbers starting from 1 to 100 in a simple way? So what is a very simple way to print the sum of the numbers from 1 to 100? So how we do it is uh, we just use range function. So what is a range function? So range function provide the a range of numbers with uh, we have a starting index and the stop index. So here we have started from one. So because we have to add from one up to hundred. So we have to give hundred and one. If we give give hundred and one, the, the result will be start calculated from one to hundred. So inside the range, we are applying sum. So sum the range of one to hundred. So next question: How to print the occurrence of the particular element in a list. So we have a list and we have to count the occurrence of a particular element in the list. So how we can do that? So we can do that with the help of count function. So when we apply count function to the particular element, so it will give us a result of the number of occurrence of the element. So for example, we have a list weekdays and we need to, we are going to count the particular element Monday, M-O-N. So we need what we have to do, print weekdays dot count of M-O-N. So how many times it is there? One, two, and three. So the output is three. So this is how we count the occurrence of a particular element in the list. So let's move on to the next question. So how to create an empty NumPy array in Python? So the NumPy allows us to use arrays in Python. So we can create this empty NumPy arrays. How we can create it? So for that first we have to import the NumPy module. So in our program, and then we can we are going to create an empty, empty array. So NumPy dot array with the with no elements, or we can create like this NumPy dot empty with an array. So this is how we create an empty. NumPy array. Seventh question. So, what is the right way to transfer a Python string into a list? So, how we convert a string into a list? So, in string is also similar to list, so it is very easy to convert it. So, we just apply the list function. So, print list if we place in the string, the particular string we want to transfer we can place the string inside the list function. So what will happen? What is, whatever the string placed inside the list function it will be converted to a list of different characters. So here, here we have Python string. So it is placed inside this list function. So the resultant is a list with all these characters. P will be used here. So this is how we transfer a Python string into a list. So let's move on to the next question. So what is enumerate function in Python? So enumerate function, uh, it contains a counter to the iterate 
iteratable object it is it helps us to uh, create a sequence so sequence of indices from starting from zero so we, if you want to print one by one uh, from a sequence of data so we can apply this you know, for example here we have a tuple called subject so it has some elements so if we want to print the elements inside the tuple one by one you can use this enumerate so for i so with the index with the index value so that one it accept the it can accept the sequential indices starting from zero so we can print the elements inside the tuple with the index zero five and one interview two questions how do we set a global variable inside a function so in python we have so normally we have two types of variables global variable and local variable so so we if you want to add a global variable inside a function we need to declare it as a global with the help of the keyword global so here we have a global variable g l o b v a r equal to zero so we uh, we have the function set the global to one. So we are setting the value of global variable zero to one. So and with the help of this global here, global, global variable. So global variable equal to one. And we are printing the global variable. So that is the result one. So print global variable. So first we'll based upon the function we call, so we'll get the value zero or one. So this is how we sector global variable with the help of the keyword global. Can I write a program to find the average of numbers in a list in Python? So we have a list and list of numbers we need to find the average. So how we, we can find the average? So here we are creating a uh, list with numbers. So for that we are getting the range, how many numbers we are going to enter into the list so they have an empty list so depending upon the the user given range so the elements are entered and it is up and so we use the up and method to up and the elements in the list so we have a list now so now we need to find the average so average equal to sum of the elements in the list by number of elements so finally we got the result average we are rounding out the function with the help of the predefined round so this is how we calculate the average of numbers in the list. Write a Python program to find the second largest number in the list. So we have a list with numbers. So we need to print the second largest number. So same what we did in the last program. So we have to get the range that is the number of elements to be stored in the list. And we need to get the elements and up and in the list. And what we are going to do, we are going to sort. Why? Because it helps us to easily access the second largest number. So we have a list of numbers in a sorted order. So in order to print the second largest number, what we are going to do? So we are going to print A, N minus 2. So it will get the second largest number from the sorted list. So if we 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so if we have a list of high numbers, the second law is we'll get the result as sort. Write a Python program to count the number of vowels in a string. So we have a string. So we need to find the number of vowels. So first of all, we have to get the input string from the user. For that, we are using an input function. So string input enter the string. So we are getting the String and we are going to find the count the number of vowels. So initially vowel equal to zero for i in string. So we are going to check. We are going to take each character from the string. For that, we are going for for loop for i in string. So we are getting each character and comparing the character with the vowel. So the, the given string may be a capital letter or it may be given in lower case or upper case. So we are, have to consider both the vowels in capitals as well as in small small letters so we are comparing that and if it is true if 
for example, if the first letter is A, so the vowel value will be incremented to 2, 1. So like this, it will keep on checking all the characters in the string. So after that, we'll print the result vowels. So if we have a string, will come out. So the number of vowels will be P, O, E, and E. So that is 4. So in order to get the right training for Python with the interview assistance, so you can go for Fido system Python training in China. So this course is handled by expert trainers as well as we have a dedicated placement team to help you with how to face the interview with all these different type of questions. So you, you may be given different portion sets as well as mock interviews will be conducted for you so that you may do your confidence along with the already you will be getting a training from the user so with that it will be easy for you to get placed so if you have any queries please feel free to contact our technical team as well as you can attend free demo classes before joining the course so to get a clear idea so happy learning.